Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about interior and exterior angles of polygons. So let's get started with this problem that will lead us into today's lesson. We're given angle ABC as shown in the figure. We're also given ray BCD. How do we find the measure of angle BCA if we're given these angles as shown in the figure. In my last YouTube video, we learned a very important theorem. In a triangle, the sum of the measure of the three interior angles is 180. We also ended up proving this theorem. Now, how do we apply this theorem for this particular problem? How do we solve for the value of x first before finding the measure of angle BCA? Well, here we know that the angle represented by x and the angle represented by 120 degrees and this angle over here, they all add up to 180. So the first thing we want to do is find this angle in terms of x. So given that we have a straight ray, which is BCD, by the definition of straight angles, we know that the measure of angle BCD must be 180. Well, we also know that the measure of angle BCD is equal to the measure of angle BCA plus 4x by the partition postulate. Then we can simply substitute to state that 180 is equal to the measure of angle BCA plus 4x, which means that the measure of angle BCA is simply equal to 180 minus 4x. Now that we have all the interior angles of triangle ABC, Let's add them all up and set them equal to 180 and solve for the value of x. So here we can say that the measure of angle BCA plus measure of angle A plus measure of angle B is equal to 180 because in a triangle, the sum of the measures of the three anterior angles is 180. Now we substitute it. Then we obtain 180 minus 4x plus x plus 120 is equal to 180 by simply substituting. And if we solve for the value of x, we get 40. Let's now calculate each of these angles inside the triangle and see if we can figure out some type of interesting relationship here. So as you can see here in the diagram, we have angle A to be 40 degrees, angle B to be 120 degrees, which was given, then angle ACB to be 20 degrees, and the exterior angle ACD to be 160 degrees. So let's look at these angles now that I'm highlighting. Angle A of 40 degrees, angle B of 120, and the exterior angle of 160 degrees. What do you notice here? What is the relationship between these angles? Well, we notice that the 160 degrees is actually the sum of the 40 degrees and the 120 degrees. So here, our claim is that the measure of angle ACD is the sum of measure of angle A and measure of angle B. So the question is, is it always true that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of its remote interior angles? Well, here we have a hypothesis now based on some example in terms of numerical values. Let's test the hypothesis by proving it and seeing if this is always true or not. So let's say we're given triangle ABC as shown in the figure. We're also given ray BCD. How would we prove that the measure of angle ACD is equal to the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B? So let's set up a statement reason table and write down the first two givens. Now from ray BCD, we know that the measure of angle BCD must be equal to 180 because that is the definition of a straight angle. We also know that the measure of angle BCD is equal to the measure of angle BCA plus the measure of angle ACD because of the partition postulate. Then we simply substitute to write that the measure of angle BCA plus measure of angle ACD is equal to 180. However, in triangle ABC, we also know that the measure of angle A plus measure of angle B plus the measure of angle BCA is equal to 180 because in a triangle, the sum of the measures of the three interior angles is 180. So what can we do at this point? 
Well, if we look at step five and six, we know that both equal to 180. So we can now substitute and set them equal to each other. So after substituting, we obtain that the measure of angle BCA plus the measure of angle ACD is equal to the measure of angle A plus measure of angle B plus measure of angle BCA. So what do we notice at this point? When you look at both sides of this equation, we have one angle in common, which is angle BCA. So what we can do here is subtract the measure of angle BCA on both sides of the equations. And in order to do so, we first need to write that the measure of angle BCA is equal to itself because of the reflexive property. Now that is actually an important step because according to the subtraction postulate, we want to subtract equal quantities, in this case, mangle BCA from equal quantities, and in this case from step seven. And once we subtract, we obtain that the measure of angle ACD is equal to measure of angle A plus measure of angle B. So it turns out that now we have proven this theorem, that it doesn't matter in which triangle when you extend one of the sides and create an exterior angle, that that is always going to be equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So our hypothesis was true. Now we can formalize this theorem into one statement, a conditional statement. So the theorem states the following now. The measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is equal in measure of the sum of its remote interior angle. So we just finished formulating a theorem based on the exterior angle of a triangle. But what about interior and exterior angles of polygons? Is there a relationship as well? Well, let's investigate this in today's lesson. Before getting started with investigating the relationship between interior and exterior angles of polygon, let's first define the word polygon. So the word polygon comes from the Greek word. Uh, poly means many and gan means angles. So the definition is as follows. A polygon is a flat shape consisting of straight lines that are joined to form a closed figure. So technically speaking, a triangle is also a polygon, right? Because it consists of many angles. Now, it is also worth noting that there are different types of polygons. Uh, for example, we have polygons and non-polygons, right? As you can see here in the figures. It's very important to notice that polygons consist of straight lines. So the lines are not curved as shown on the right side and they do not intersect. So let's further examine regular polygons. Generally speaking, we have two types of polygons, convex polygons and not convex polygons, as you can see in the figure. So the definition of a convex polygon is as follows. A convex polygon is a polygon such that no line containing a side of the polygon contains a point in the interior of the polygon. So as you can see for part B, not convex polygons, you have point B that is in the interior of the polygon. So for today's lesson, we will be focusing only on convex polygons. Let's now investigate the sum of all the interior angles of a convex polygon. We know that a triangle is also a convex polygon and the sum of the interior angle is 180 degrees. But what about if you're dealing with polygons that are have four sides or five sides or six sides? Let's look at those. Let's start with the one on the left. So here we have a quadrilateral. So the best way to figure out what the sum of the interior angles is is to split that quadrilateral into two triangles as shown here. So we end up with two triangles with each to have a sum of 180. So therefore the quadrilateral consists of a total of 360 degree if you sum up all the interior angles. Now what about for the five-sided polygon, the one in the center here? How many triangles can we draw in there? Well, it turns out that here we can draw three triangles. And three times 180 degrees is equal to 
540 degrees. And that's the sum of all the interior angles of a five-sided polygon. Then finally, for a six-sided polygon, four triangles times 180, you end up with a total interior angle measure of 720 degrees. So let's say we want to find the sum of all the interior angles of a polygon. How do we find it? Well, first we let n be equal to the number of sides of a polygon. So that is now our variable. So what do we notice here? Well, if you look at the figure, we notice that the number of triangles that you can draw inside a polygon is always going to be the number of sides minus two. Then once we do n minus two, we can now multiply that by 180 because 180 degrees is the sum of all the interior angles of each of those triangles that can be drawn in the polygon. Therefore, the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is simply 180 times n minus two. Let's say we want to find the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon. Well, what is a regular polygon now? Let's define it. A polygon is regular if and only if the polygon is equiangular and equilateral. Basically, all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. In this case, we can now find the measure of each interior angle by dividing the sum of the interior angles by the number of sides. If we, for example, call each angle x, then x is equal to 180 times n minus 2 divided by n. Now, how do we find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon? Similar to a triangle, we want to extend one of the sides so that we can create an exterior angle. So let's say we extend that angle here. So let's call that point A. Then the exterior angle would be this one, right? So there's already something we can say here. There's already a relationship between the exterior angle and one of the interior angle here. Here we can say that the interior and exterior angle of a polygon are supplementary, which means that the measure of this exterior angle here is simply 180 minus x. So that's one way to find the measure of one of the exterior angle of the regular polygon. But what if the interior angle is not known? Well, there's actually a different way to do this. So let's actually come up with that formula. So from here, we know that each exterior angle is 180 minus x. However, if we add them all up, we first want to find out what is the sum of all the exterior angles. So basically what we can do here, take 180 degrees minus x and multiply that figure by n, okay? So here we end up with the sum of all the exterior angles. So I'm gonna let that equal to S sub E, okay? So that means that S sub E is simply to equal to 180 times N minus X times N, okay? So all we did is just distribute the N inside the parentheses here. So what is X here? Well, according to our previous formula, X is 180 times N minus two, and then everything divided by N. So let's substitute that. So here we get the sum of all the exterior angle is 180 times n minus, and now we substitute all of that, 180 times n minus two over n, and then we multiply that by n. And we can already see here that uh, the n cancel, okay? And what we can do is distribute the 180 inside the parentheses again. So we end up with S sub E equal to 180 times N minus, and now we distribute that and we have 180 times N. And then now this becomes plus 360, right? Because 180 times negative two is negative 360, but we also have that negation over here, which becomes positive. So this cancels out now. So that means that the sum of all the exterior angle is 360 degrees. And this is actually always true, no matter what polygon you have, that the sum of all the exterior angle is always going to be 360. So that means that if we want to find um, each exterior angle, 
What can we do with that 360? We can simply divide that by n. And that's how we can find the exterior angle if the interior angle is unknown and we cannot use the supplementary method. So to summarize, we can say that the measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon is not only 180 minus x, it could also be calculated by taking 360 divided by n. Now, how is it possible that the sum of all the exterior angle equals to 360? Well, we were able to calculate that, but there's actually a visual way to see it. So let me demonstrate that. Let's say we have the following convex polygons here. So here we extended the lines to represent the exterior angles here. Now, what happens if we, let's say, take the quadrilateral on the left and zoomed out until you cannot see the quadrilateral anymore? Then what happens to all the exterior angles in this case? How would it look like? Well, let's visualize that. Okay, so as you can see here, if we add them all up, and the polygon is super tiny or very far away, we have 360 degrees. Similarly, with a five-sided polygon and in a similar manner with a six-sided polygon, we always end up with 360 degree no matter what. Okay, so that's basically it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.